Okay, my name's Lelika. English is one of the subjects I think students tend to dislike because it isn't something you can really just study for and there isn't truly a formula for it. It really tests your understanding and your critical thinking abilities and that means that the only way you can really master the subject and do well in your exam is via lots and lots of practice. So today I'm going to talk about the two papers that you'll have to do for Cambridge AS level examinations, what those two papers require via the syllabus that is on the official Cambridge website and then some tips that I would give you to practice those specific skill sets that you require to do well in those exams. So let's get into it. So first off to discuss the syllabus I will put a link to the syllabus in the description of the video. You can go check that out um, and you can kind of read along as I talk to you about it. So for both papers there's actually the exact same requirements when it comes to what you need to know. Um, not your skill sets but rather the actual theory that you need to understand. So first off they say that you'll need to know the conventions of a whole bunch and a wide variety of different types of texts and the elements and linguistic features of those texts. It's quite a wide range it'll be from like advertisements to diary entries to articles to descriptive writing and from those different types of texts you'll need to be able to pick up on and understand the purpose of stuff like the voice, the word ordering sen and sentence structure, figurative language and vocabulary. Something that is also important for you to understand is the significance of audience and how that can change the imagery used or the different types of sentence structures that are used to try to bring a point across with the audience in mind. And then broadly speaking, the, the ways in which the genre, purpose and context of a text contribute to the meaning of the text. I personally would definitely suggest you make flashcards to try and memorize the different genres of text and the different linguistic elements that will pop up in those texts. I made a whole video on different types of scientific methods that you can use to memorize information and to study it pro properly. I will link it up here. You can click on that. In that video, I do cover flashcards and the best way you can use them to kind of activate your brain and actually retain the information. But on those flashcards, you should write down the different genres of the text. On the front, you want to write down diary, for example. And then on the back, you'll write down the different types of sentence structures and the norms of the type of way you would be writing if you were to write a diary entry or to have to analyze a diary entry in your examination. And then go ahead and do that for every type of genre that your textbook will give you and you should be good to go. So for paper one, they're testing your reading and comprehension abilities. So, so having memorized all of the genres and literary conventions that might pop up in the texts that are given to you in your examination, it'll be a lot easier to be able to write commentaries uh, in paper one because that's the bulk of what you will be doing in this exam paper. Definitely you need to do a lot of past papers to be able to do at all decent in this paper. I would suggest maybe just even taking texts that aren't in a post paper. So take a random article in your local newspaper and annotate it and kind of pick out the different elements that are in the article based on the fact that it is an article because you want to be able to do that super quickly so you can spend less time analyzing the text and more time writing about your analysis. They really don't give you that much time for this paper so you definitely want to be as efficient as possible and I would suggest just practicing analyzing texts without even writing about them at first just to get your kind of cogs oil <laughs> that's a weird way of putting it but you get what i'm saying for this paper in the syllabus they state that you will have to write analytically about a range of conventions you will have to write analytically about the effects of the conventions so again besides just knowing the conventions you need to know the effect and the purpose of those conventions given the genre of the text and the audience that it is written to you'll be using quotations and evidence with judgment to produce concise, meaningful commentaries on the texts. That's what they're looking for. You might be asked to write in the same style as a text given to you, or you could be asked to write in a different style to the text given to you, but to reuse the information in the text to write your own piece. Or you could be asked to compare the different linguistic elements and styles 
of your text as compared to the text that is given to you. Generally for this paper to kind of prepare I would suggest just reading literature and annotating that. Definitely get someone if you can to kind of give you feedback on your annotations because that's the only way you'll really be able to get better at it. Online you can go find example papers that have already been graded by examinators so you can try to learn as much as you can from the person who wrote those papers mistakes but also from what they did well. Do a frit down of past papers as much as you humanly can, um, write them in the time formally allocated by Cambridge. It's always helpful to maybe memorize a structure for the different types of text that you might be asked to write. So for example, if it's an article that you need to analyze, know that these are the type of linguistic elements that tend to pop up in an article and then have a beginning body and ending structure that you can just kind of fill in the blanks for when you actually write your own paper. Again, they don't give you that much time, so you want to be able to be as efficient as possible and you want most of what you're writing to just be kind of muscle memory so that you don't have to use as much time to think about what you're even going to be writing. You can just kind of churn that paper out. If you practice that enough, what you will be churning out will end up being quality content. If you can, also get someone to grade your past papers. This way you'll know where you can improve um, and that'll just really be a benefit to you in the long run. Paper two, test your writing abilities. You will be writing for a specified audience and purpose to fulfill the brief that is provided to you. For paper two, you'll be writing two pieces. One will be imaginative writing and the other one will be writing for an audience and both will have to be 600 to 900 words long. You'll need to understand and be able to apply principles such as topic sentences, connectives, internal coherence, etc. to be able to actually write something that is of value to the examinator to be awarded a good grade. A few examples of what you would be using in paper two would be imagery in descriptive writing, rhetorical devices in argumentative writing, and evaluative lexis in critical writing. Again, I would suggest you read loads of books and papers. Reading a lot will help you in this paper because it'll help you understand the style that you need to write in for whether that is a narrative or a descriptive or an argumentative piece that you're writing and then the conventions of that style so that you don't write a great article when they ask you for a diary entry for example. What I did to try and impress the examinators would be to choose a few interesting vocabulary words that you just want to stick into your writing anywhere you can. Um, make them big uh, and impressive to hopefully kind of grab the attention of the examinator and just push your paper just that bit above the massive pool of papers that the examinator already has to be marking. You want to do loads of past papers. This especially is a paper you just want to be able to churn out. You want to be so well oiled and practiced that you can get a prompt and just write down. Again, it might be useful for you to memorize a specific framework that you can write within for your paper. Again, to up your efficiency and make sure that you actually finish in the time allocated to you on the day of your examination. As for paper one, in paper two, you definitely want someone to be grading your past papers, specifically someone who understands the Cambridge AS level syllabus so that they can help you understand where you need to improve and what you're already doing well, so that you can be confident that what you're writing will be appropriate specifically for a Cambridge examinator. Personally, I really found the English for Cambridge to be quite fun, both on IG and AS level. It takes a lot of hours of prep, but I really love the flow you get into when you're well practiced, where you can just churn out good papers. And I mean, I'm quite proud of the mark that I got. So I hope that what I told you today and kind of what I learned along the way will help you to get a grade that you're also proud of. If you're interested, there's a link to the Cambridge at Home blog in the description of this video. Feel free to go check that out. I'll link the blog that is specifically tied to this video that you can go check out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the entirety of this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe. This is what I do on this channel. So if you enjoyed it, you probably will enjoy the rest of the content that I'm making. I make weekly videos in an attempt to help you be better able to ace your Cambridge examinations remotely. But that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your studying journey.